Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you had a good week in the market. It is Friday, November 5th. Remember, remember, we've got 20 minutes to close. Jimmy has just come up to VWAP. We're going to talk about GameStop technical analysis, uh, this beautiful whale of a spy that's just blown off the top. Sub up, like up, comment down. Happy money sticks around. And you can also hear whale noises. Here is our Twitter if you want to follow us on there, at HappyMoneyYT. Thank you. And we have a Discord. And yeah, link is in the description for that. <clears throat> um, Spy Rippin, new all time highs, day after day after day after day. Let's see, it's been one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days of all time highs in a row. <clears throat> Even with a couple red in there, that's pretty impressive. Pretty impressive. Uh, if it if it's going to the full 161.8% on the fibs, that'll put it at 47.4. Maybe it'll do that next week, but I think we are getting very close, very very close on the spy at least. Let's um let's not look at the drawings momentarily, and you can see a massive divergence on the RSI as well as on a long term. This is weekly. So on the weekly chart, you can see a big divergence here. Uh, we do have a, a bearish MACD crossover. Today, it's kind of flirting with crossing over green, but uh, yeah, that that's not a that's not a full commitment to me. Not yet. Um, at the very least, I think next week it consolidates, but we could open up Monday and it could be a black Monday. So I've got some positions for that. We'll go over those. Just daily, way overbought. And yeah, you can't you can't hide that divergence. So today on the spy had had a good gap up this morning. I think the job job results or whatever non farm came out and they were good. So we had a gap up, kind of scared in the middle of the day and now settling back down. Pretty pretty flat day really overall, up a quarter percent. 15 minutes. Uh GameStop like we were thinking came down today. Had some volatility in there though and didn't come down too far it's not not too bad really i think we'll expect some more red into next week unless if we have news and i have shares and hedged and options and i've got them every which way on gme over this weekend in case there's news uh, but yeah we have bearish macd on the hourly and a big this big red candle that we got today um not fully under the nine but this this one's definitely under the nine and now it looks like all the candles are kind of trending underneath that nine moving average so I would say it's still bearish and probably still come down still pretty far off of this nine moving average. So <clears throat> at least down to this 200 level for support, um, maybe down to this like 190 area that tops all these. And I think at the lowest, we'd probably re retest kind of this, this higher low that we've been building for a year. Let's see from this jump 145 153 that was a pretty big jump though in the 20s might be a 20s jump 70 80 90 so that might put us at 190 for the next low um and that's stretching out pretty far probably it's not just gonna dump it, we might see kind of a, a fade away here and then a rally i think i think this month we still rally we still pinch this i think was uh just kind of a uh surprise from bed bath and beyond and made it do that I do think we were kind of on our way before that, and then that just kind of did that. So now we have a couple days to consolidate, maybe a week. That's, again, without any news or anything like that. Um, so, yeah. It looks good, though. I'm happy with some consolidation. Uh, what is crazy, so we were talking about this being a new resistance, and it really is if you subtract this uh, this wick up here. So we've kind of found this this resistance right up here, 222, right where these are, and that's kind of what it's holding up to be. And then I was saying earlier, like kind of probably try and trade in this range, it's like 175. I guess it's kind of 220 now. Um, and we'll see, maybe it won't come down that low, but yeah, I see it come down at least in the near term. Um, no Ryan Cohen tweets or news yet from GameStop. It very well could be this weekend. Uh, some NFT dividend news or something like that. So I am keeping exposure to it. Confluent rally today. This they had earnings and beat on all estimates. We've traded this and shares of it, and it's 
broken out pretty big time. However, a lot of these tech companies and such, if the market does turn down, they will all come down hard. I did actually notice McAfee was starting to rally. I don't know what the news was on that. I think this one was heavily shorted. Oh, here we go. Advent nears deal to buy McAfee. Oh, buyout. All right. McAfee gains reports of talks to be taken private. Interesting. Um, so options on GameStop today. We did pretty well. I had a call credit spread from yesterday that I opened up. Um, just anticipation for today. I like those much better than selling covered calls. Covered calls are they're scary. Um, but yeah, so those those call credit spreads. It was a two. 213 it had to stay 212 and a half so it was pretty sketchy for a bit there but i was able to um i guess when i got them yesterday i can't remember where exactly but i got them and they were i don't know where they were but this whole time down they came up i think they've maxed out like 60 percent or something down here um i didn't close them because i thought we'd probably still come down further kind of stayed around here grinded back to vwap and then i was up maybe 40 45 percent on them i was like 212 and a half we have to close below. I would hold it if it was a smaller position, but it was like three thousand dollars either way. Their max loss, max profit, and I was like, I'm just gonna cut my gains here. So took out maybe fifteen hundred or whatever right here, and Jimmy rallied up and then came down. And I'm glad I did because I don't. Those might, yeah, those look like they're expiring the money. So good thing I did that. I opened up more call credit spreads actually up here when we were ripping with BBBY. And BBBY was ripping because Citron gave a, came out with a long report on it and gave it some crazy price targets, I think. So not too sure why or what's going on with that, but Bed Bath Beyond rallied from that. Brought Jimmy up a little bit with it. And yeah, we did some call credit spreads for next week. And then I think I scaled into them even up here somewhere. But yeah, we'll go over those. Um, so those, I, I'm not saying it'll necessarily close below my, my strikes on those, but I think it'll come down at least the first day or two of next week and I'll be able to close them out. Um, but yeah, as far as, as far as being over 230, that kind of is in my head, that DD about being over 230. And then if it's over there for more than an hour, you're gonna get margin called. That's kind of interesting to think about, to kind of visualize, okay, it's, we're over 230, it's like this, it's like the, the shot clock's on and they've got to get it back under, liquidation's gonna happen. I mean, a wick like this definitely would make you think something something similar to that. Um, anyways, yeah. Open up the plays today. I sold out of Vulcan shares today. I like it, VLCN. It's a e-bike scooter, like off-road type thing. They're gonna do, they're gonna come out with uh, side-by-sides. Um, it rallied a lot today. Typically, I don't try and time the top, Especially with shares, it's really easy to just wait for the momentum to shift. Unless you're trading crypto, then then sometimes it just like flash crashes all the time. But with shares, I mean, even if it starts to crash pretty quick, you can see the momentum. Uh, I guess, yeah, I had good gains on this. I thought it was probably top. I did kind of try and time the top, I guess, with it. But also because with the spy where it's at, I, I feel like we could start correcting very soon and start pulling some of the swing trading long shares off. I might get back in this once it cools down. On the hourly, it's it's pretty hot. On the daily, it's getting up there, uh, 69. Um, and yeah, so I sold that. Our bird shares took a big drop yesterday. It looks like it's pretty flat today though. So waiting for that to pick up some news. Hopefully the Vulcan party will shift capital over to birds. Since they're sort of the same space. Um, let's look at the history today. RKT, so we're doing a poor man's cover call on RKT, a little different than the one we're doing on uh, GameStop. This one I have a higher strike, so I have uh, these 16, 25, 89 strike calls. Got them for next, I have them for next January. So with these, I can then sell other calls against them, and that's what that's what I did, and Rocket kind of came down. They had earnings. I actually don't even know if it did well or not, but it sold off at any rate. Looks like I got rid of all of them. So we had 16 covered calls. It's basically, uh, it's a diagonal spread, but it's basically like a covered call on your long calls. Uh, it was only like 80 bucks in premium or something, maybe a hundred. 
And yeah, I closed out of those. And I actually probably should open some more now. Just to sell against those. Rocket's chart though looks kind of kind of good, so. Um today sold off three and a half percent, but overall in the daily we're we're grinding up. We've got bullish MACD, higher highs, higher lows. Uh, everything looks good for rally. We're getting some volume now too, so I think we'll kind of have a continuation from whatever the earnings was uh, in a good way. So I'll, I'll wait on that, I guess, because Rocket, I think, could be one of those shorted ones also uh, in the basket. Um, sold short. I don't even know what I did in here on GameStop. Closed stuff, open stuff. Opened up VXXX calls. Cog shouted out. There was a DD talking about the VIX and volatility spikes and how the stock market has been for years now just basically trading volatility more than anything it's really interesting i understood maybe 25 percent of it um but it kind of talks about how the sell-off during covid uh it uses news like maybe a, a virus or pandemic and that could have some effect on it but a lot of it was just uh kind of a volatility basically a volatility squeeze almost uh, at any rate, so we got some VIX. This is like, kind of like the VIX. I'm not sure. There's an ETN. I don't know all the differences. This is VIX short-term futures on the S&P 500. So it's kind of an, in, it's, so it's actually just playing volatility, I think. Yeah. Um, similar to VIX. We got some calls on this. And uh, I thought about actually buying shares on just the VIX since it has kind of found this floor. And you can kind of see it, it's been diverging from the market for quite a while now. Uh, I found this floor is making a higher low here. Look back all the way 414. Wait, where are we? Wow. Really diverged. Am I looking at this right? Yeah. Why is that? VIX is weird, man. I don't understand it. But uh, anyways, looks like it's diverged from like back here, whereas the SPY kept rallying up from here, from 414, um, and the VIX didn't keep coming down. And I don't think this is because of reverse splits or anything. I don't know what that is. Maybe that's something. But um, yeah, the VIX kind of found a floor there. So that's a divergence where this is going up and the VIX isn't going down, meaning volatility, the price, the price of volatility more, uh, has stayed elevated, meaning this is basically people aren't buying it's not sustained um that's kind of how i take it and then you can see uh let's see that's covid crash but yeah that that dd was kind of interesting it's on our discord if you guys want to read it um but yeah so we got some VIX calls or vxx calls and yeah they're up 86 <laughs> percent i don't know let's see on those i got 25 30 strike calls for um next month not a huge position at all but a nice little nice little hedge among other hedges that we have jimmy being the the biggest one uh aso bought some puts on that so i think someone shouted it out i think it was probably donaro chart looked good puts on that i'm trying to get put exposure I'm trying to rotate back over into some bearish exposure um this one's got a divergence on the rsi and I guess who, who what maybe it's Babo actually in Discord. Insider sold a bunch, I think, also. So we'll see what happens with that. Um get a little more of that. Yes. There's our Vulcan shares we sold. I'm trying to look at cost. I think we made like three grand on it. Uh because we had we had like five grand in it, maybe. And then it went up, I think it went up 40 something percent. But it's weird how it sells it all batched. But yeah, sold all those. Um, sold to close. Rocket. Yeah, that's okay. So those are the rocket calls I sold to close. The poor man's covered call. We'll go over the GMA calls on the on the thing over there. Tesla. I opened up short position on Tesla. I had a debit spread expired worthless today. I opened up a call credit spread on Tesla. 12.30, 12.35. Tesla is insanely overbought. I think it's basically gone through a short squeeze kind of under people's noses. That's kind of what that looks like to me. Um... I mean, the RSI is insane. Weekly is insane. Go down to the hourly, you can see a divergence here on the RSI and a downward trend MACD as well as a divergence from this high to this high. So 
Uh, pretty pretty good size position, I think, on this. Call credit spread 12.30, 12.35 by next Friday. So yeah, it's already out of the money. I mean, I didn't it basically just has to come lower or stay there. <laughs> um, but so this one's 3,700 max profit, 3,700 max loss. Um, yeah, sometimes I get burned doing this on Spy or Tesla, but sometimes it works out well. Rocks, someone shot this out in our Discord. Got some puts on that also because the chart. And that might be was insider buying. I don't know, there's a few of you guys shouting out plays that I was like, that's interesting. Uh, the chart on this looks pretty nice and smooth. We do have this bearish MACD right here, as well as this divergence with this high and this high and lower RSI. Uh, they had earnings or insider selling or something on this one. Daily MACD is high or RSI. So it's it's due for pullback. I got actual, I have, what did I get? I got puts on it. So yeah, that's not, that's a more aggressive play. And then SPXS, I averaged down on my SPXS calls. These are 23 strike for middle of this month, monthly calls. Um, SPXS is the inverse of the SPY, the S&P. Bear, three times levered ETF. Typically sketchy to play option this. It's leverage on leverage. Um, hourly, we've got way oversold. So I don't think it's a divergence. But I mean, basically, if SPY is coming down, this is going to go up. And daily, this thing's way oversold. So you can see just this last run in SPY going up. This is it right here. So we'll see on that. Since it is, it does decay over time, though, those are, those are kind of sketchy. Uh, but hopefully it works out. All right, let's look at the GME really quick. <clears throat> it's very confusing. So we still have the 290, 350 call debit spread for next week. Uh, this is my one bullish play, other than of course all the op or all the shares. Um, these are the numbers. If it closes above 350, that's kind of my price target for next week or a high. I've got eight here. I think it's a hundred thousand actually max gain. If you do all of them, why isn't it showing? Oh, maybe I sold some. Shoot, I need to get more. I totally forgot. I think I sold some yesterday. I'm just gonna average down on it. Yeah, I want exposure over the weekend. So it's the 290, 350. Buy 10 more. Yes, 20 more. Okay. Maybe, maybe. Oh, I'm not having to chase it. Market makers are camera shy. Yeah, look at you, you're not messing around. Not moving stuff around on me. Not doing shenanigans. Coming in to close, I need to hurry up. Oh, there you go, yes, yes, yes. Oh, finally it filled, holy crap, that was close. That might have been a $150,000 Two second play right there. <laughs> uh, okay, so we got more of those. And then um, I have call credit spreads on it because TA on it, like I said, looks bearish for next week. It's a 205, 212 and a half call credit spread. It's all mixed up in here though with these shares. I think it's like a $3,000 max gain if it closes below 205 next week. This isn't all of it, this is some of it, but. Uh, yeah, and then actually I got some just naked calls for next week. Some 470 calls. That's if we that's if we start squeezing. I want those in the money. Uh, these were cheap. Only got six of them. And then still have our 700 calls. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll average into those at some point. Might need more time. Hard to know. Hard to know when this thing's gonna go. Uh, yeah, I think, I think we did everything. I hope I rolled everything over. That's what I don't like about doing later videos. Sometimes I forget to roll things over and then I have to call a brokerage and say, I didn't mean to do that. Don't take my shares. <clears throat> I think we're good though. Um, on our TD account, oh yeah. Let me show you guys on the TD account real quick. So this is the one I'm doing like basically theta farming and uh, we rolled this. So I've got 125 Jimmy shares in here and then uh, 120 call for next January. So it's a leap. This thing's up 35% from being, uh, from just the stock coming up. And then I had, actually I didn't do it over the weekend. 
but I had uh, two covered calls that made $550 this week in premium, 240 strike. I would do it over the weekend, but in case there's news and we were at 500 on Monday, I don't want those calls yet. So this is a nice little farming one. This account's probably doing the best of any of them just because I don't touch it. That's typically how it goes. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Have a good weekend. Chill out. We'll see you on the moon. Peace out.